Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Z Edge Model S3 dual lens car camera. Now this is one of those dash cams that you see a lot of people getting nowadays. But what's special about this, as mentioned, it has two cameras, one front facing cam and one rear facing cam. Now what's nice about the rear one, if you want, you can actually have it face into the car. So if you want to have a, like a driver cam, you can actually put this on the passenger side and have it face back towards you. But anyway, we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, I want to start off by saying this product was actually provided to me by a great friend and major contributor to this channel. Um, we'll call him Scotty. And Scotty says, hey, I got this thing. I'm going to be moving to Florida. It's a long trip from here from New York to Florida. And obviously he has to drive down to bring his vehicle with him. And he wanted to have some security and he decided to purchase this particular model of dash cam uh, through some research of his own and looking at different reviews and whatnot. And for the functionality, he liked the rear cam. And uh, I said, well, you know, after he sent me the link to it and everything else, that after the fact, he said, this is what I got. I'd like you to do a review video of it, learn how to use it. Then I'm gonna come over to your house one day before I move and you're going to install it in my vehicle. I'm gonna pay you for your time and you're also going to uh, show me how to use it. And I said, well, yeah, that'd be great. I thought it'd be a good idea to do the video on this. Uh, I watch a lot of Tech Moans videos. Uh, Matt does a great job doing video reviews on dash cams like this. I'll put a link to his channel at the end of this if you want to check his stuff out. But I'm going to try my best to do a Tech Moan-ish type video. Uh, he goes really in depth on a lot of things. Um, I'm kind of going to gloss over some stuff. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll try to my best to answer them based upon my knowledge of this. Uh, I've actually been playing with this for a few weeks now. He'll, he'll actually be here tomorrow uh, as of the time of this recording to have this installed. So I'll have the camera taken out inside and uh, I'll walk through the installation process. Now in my test vehicle, I was only able to use the front camera. I don't have uh, rear windows at all, so I have no place to stick this rear camera. So that's uh, an important thing to note. And when you don't use the rear cam, this records in a different uh, resolution. And I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. So we'll look around the box first. So as it says, this is the Model S3 Stealth Dual Lens Car Cam slash Video Recorder. This side over here, we have some specs. Now let's see if maybe I can nudge in here for you guys. So if you wanna go ahead and pause the video and read these specs, uh, go ahead and do so. But some things I wanted to point out it does include a 16 gigabyte micro SD card or TF card as they call it uh, outside the states. And this records in WQHD which is 2560 by 1440 resolution. And that's important to note that it only does that when it's just the front lens only. When you have both cameras it records 1920 by 1080. And they're both 150 degree wide angle, of course. You want that in these kind of situations. Uh, it has this monitor and parking mode, uh, motion detection, loop recording. Those are some features you see basically on most of these units. Uh, and it does have a picture in picture display on it. I haven't really been able to test that out. I believe you'll get to see both view from the front and the rear cam at the same time. Uh, and I'll explain briefly the parking mode. There's a motion sensor in here, as it says by motion detection. Uh, if your car gets jostled at all while it's in parking mode, uh, it'll actually start to record both cameras for, I believe it's like a 30 second clip or whatever, uh, with audio and everything. And uh, I'll get into how that actually knows it's in parking mode and, uh, and, and when we get into this. And loop recording, that's just how long of each little loop is that this will record segment wise. Uh, on the other side of the box here, it just has some blurbs, 150 degree field view, loop recording, you know, we saw these already. And there's not really much over here, 30 day uh, money back guarantee. And it's from Zero Edge Technology. And of course he got it from Amazon, as you can tell by their little sticker over here. So let's go ahead and take a look in this box. Of course, I'll, I'll mention it's pretty decent packaging. You know, I know that's a, an important thing to a lot of people. It's got one of these nice style boxes here, it just lifts off. To reveal our unit, I'll go ahead and just place that to the side. We'll just dig through the stuff in the box first. Nice foam, surround it, a little uh, cardboard piece here. The manual, we'll briefly look through that. And some wires and some bits and bobs in here. Now the little 
rubber band I'll just mention is not how this came. I just lost a twisty tie. But we have here a USB to micro USB. Uh, of course, this is your cigarette lighter adapter. This is going to give you two USB outputs, a little USB, uh, I should say, LED charging indicator here. And this is a long lead. Now, this has actually got USB mini and USB micro ends on it. Or actually, I'm sorry, these are both the same. These are both USB uh, mini ends. And this is what goes from the front cam to the rear cam. And you have a smaller version of this same cable here. So this is the USB to USB mini. So it's using the mini to do the uh, power and to connect to a computer and everything else. And it's using, or I should say it's using the micro. See, these things always get confusing with the terminology here because, you know, just when you thought this was uh, mini, they came out with micro. But yeah, you get the idea. It's, this, it's just the standard USB connector ends, but they put the same one on here and one's acting like an in, one's acting like an out. And you know, this is, it's nice to give you these options because you you might only need a short little piece of cable to get you up from your window down to your, your cigarette lighter. Uh, or if you're transferring it to the computer, this guy here is nice and long. You can go all the way around and hide it and everything. And obviously, this is really long. I had to look in the book and see what the length is. It's a nice, heavy, long cable. Obviously, the longer you go, the heavier cable you need for data loss and whatnot. And, uh, that's a whole other story. And then you need better shielding for signal loss. That's why this guy's got a little tiny cable here, and then the other guys here are fatter as they get longer. But that makes sense. They give you good quality cable there alone. This guy here, it's just your standard run-of-the-mill adapter, 5-volt, um, 2.4 amp output. Uh, it should be plenty to charge a basic cell phone and you know the camera at the same time But I wouldn't expect it to like you know give your phone the full charge as quickly as it can because Most of the chargers for the phone are 2.4 amps on their own anyway, but it's nice that you have the two outputs on there uh, Let's see anything else in here. Yeah, we have a, a little tool to help you remove the adhesive afterwards I'll show you that what that does This is the rear cam. We'll leave that in the bag and get to that in a moment. Uh, one of the mounts, there's another mount, it's still inside my vehicle. We're going to put this one in uh, Scotty's vehicle when he gets here and I'll have to pop mine off. And there's a getting started guide down here and a little thank you special offer thing. We'll, we'll just leave those in the box, no one's really looking at those. And then they give you some nice little clips here that these can stick to whatever area you want and hold the wires. Uh, I'm a fan of trying to tuck them into paneling and everything, where else where you can, but where you can't, this is a good thing to have on hand. So this tool, uh, when you stick these down, you can use this to get in here and pry it off and the larger sides for this guy. Now it's nice, uh, in both situations they use 3M products. This is the VHB, I believe stands for very high bond, but this stuff is ooey, gooey, sticky. Uh, I've used this tape before. As a matter of fact, where I first put this in my van, it stuck really good and I had to move it and it was not fun and I didn't have this in my hand. But anyway, nice to see that on there. That's a good quality touch. So anyway, that's what's in the box. You get enough goodies. So let's take a look at these guys. We'll start with the rear cam first because that's going to be quickly talked about and then we're out of here with this one. So yeah, 1080p camera on here. It's got a little tightening nut up here on the top and uh, a ratcheting mount as you can see. And what's nice is you can actually put this flat and it looks like, let's see, it looks like it possibly sits yeah, kind of flat enough where you could put it on a flat pane of glass, perhaps like a, a back van window, if indeed I had uh, glass. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is in the bottom. This is a 16 gigabyte card. I forgot this, the micro SD card. Um, it's nice because this is a Kingston brand. It's actually a, a real decent card. You know, it's not like a off the shelf, no name, nobody card. So it's nice to see that a little touch too. Uh, but we're going to be using a larger card, a uh, much, much larger card than this. In fact, higher than what this thing recommends. We'll get to that in just moments. But yeah, same uh, VHB tape on the back here. And that adjustment's really nice. And I'm not 100% sure, but it does look like it has a microphone in here. And this little hole, you can see there's something glowing behind it. That might even be a little piezo buzzer. Now, if this was mine... I would possibly take the back off and see. Um, it looks like it actually might come off pretty easily. I haven't looked at this yet. We might be able to use this tool here. I wasn't planning on doing this. So 
because uh, I was afraid maybe if I did this it wouldn't pop back together and I know a lot of people do like when I take things apart hmm let's see I'm gonna give this a, sh a go here and let's see if I can get this open well the back cover popped right off there's nothing back here it's just a little ribbon cable and this is just gonna be a board you know uh, we could take off this back real quick here just to take a look at it and that's pretty cute it comes out as one little module you can see how that ribbon cable just connects around to the front and it's smart they put some celastic up here this is this little goo looking stuff this is actually designed to hold this piece down in here and prevent this from working loose and the cable coming loose so there's some nice vibration resistance in there that's actually a really nice touch i'm not going to break this down any further but yeah it's nice to see that and they actually have the camera on a separate board than the processing board it's amazing uh you know 1080p camera in such a little package and i will mention anybody looking to hack something this is actually a really great device to be able to hack because you can see it popped out of the housing really quickly and can be loaded into something else and as mentioned there's the usb connector on the other side to go back to the main camera which we will take a look at right now pretty nice size screen on the back here uh, i think it said it was 4.3 inch i'm not 100 sure i'm sorry 2.4 inch screen still not a bad size uh, it's got what looks like possibly two speakers on either side or maybe just one speaker on the other side is decorative. And there is two tiny little holes over here. They are indicators for the charging and the recording. There's a little red light and a little blue light. The blue light, I have to say, is actually kind of annoying. It's one of those uh, ultra bright blue lights, but it's kind of like pinpoint because the hole is so tiny. So it, it's only on when the thing charges, and it's not a very big battery, so it doesn't take very long to charge. But note that is there. I mean, the red one isn't as bad. Red doesn't seem to be as uh, annoying, uh, even though it's blinking. Uh, I think most people, too, will have these mounted you know, behind their rear view mirror. I don't have a rear view mirror in my van since I don't have any rear mirror, uh, rear windows. So it, it kind of makes sense. So that's kind of uh, one of the drawbacks, I guess. I don't have a place to really hide it. So it was in my view all the time. But uh, after a while, the screen does blank out. So you don't have to worry about that. Other things you can see, the 5 volt input over here. This is the AV input for the rear camera, obviously. It's got this matte finish to it, which is kind of nice. You can see this is the piano we finish around here. And it's got the kind of matte all around. It does have this protective thing. Actually, I'm going to take that off right now. A uh, bunch of buttons on the front, you get the idea there. Top, you have your card slot, uh, reset button, and this is your mount. So obviously that just key holes in and turns. And the camera, I will point out, actually moves so you can actually get it right where you want. Keep in mind your windshield's gonna be on the angle, so you wanna get this parallel with the road. And well, that's really all there is to see from the outside of this. So like I said, it does have a battery in it. I can power this up for a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go through the book a little bit first and show you some specs and things. And maybe we'll get power to this from my, my bench supply here so we can simulate what it does when it's actually in a vehicle. All right, so moving along to this user's guide here. Uh, I'm just going to briefly buzz through this. You know, we already showed you everything on the outside of the unit here. Uh, they show you where to mount it. They mentioned that uh, the best place to do it is basically, like I said, behind the rearview mirror. And you want to try to route the wires as far away from the driver just to get them out of the way, things like that. And obviously, you want the actual camera itself to be closer to the driver because one, it gets more of the driver's view, and two, it's easier to get to if you have to actually do something with it. Um, there's a way to take a picture, for example, while you're driving or doing something. If there's some event you want to capture, you can press a button. Now, keep in mind this thing loops, so when it gets filled, you know the card will actually start and go back to the beginning again and start recording over. So using that in that regard, you know you're never going to run out of space basically, but your files will be basically overwritten. So uh, there's a button for emergency use. So when you get into an event and there's you don't want to overwrite it, you can push a button and it'll protect that particular block of file. You know there's other things that's all covered here in the book. Uh, I suggest if you possibly find an online version of this if you're interested in the read through it uh, i usually generally recommend that for all products so you really get a grasp of what you're getting involved in before you even make the purchase on it and you know you hate to find something and then you get it and it doesn't do what you want but here's some of the important specs here this is what i really want to show and what's nice is in 1280 by 720p you can record 120 frames per second 
So if you actually really want, you can use this as an action cam in a way and use it to get some uh, slow shots. Because once you take that 120 frames a second and slow it down to the standard you know, playback at 30 frames a second, it's like uh, you're reducing the playback speed by four, I guess. So that way you can do mock slow motion or faux motion as people call it. But yeah, so you do have that option, or you could see uh, for the front camera only, you can actually get 60 frames a second, 1920, 1080p, which is really awesome. Uh, yeah, and the standard 2560 by 1440p is only 30 frames a second. Now, you know, it's only a, an emergency camera for most of the time, so the higher resolution is going to be better for the idea of you'll get a clear picture. So getting license plate numbers or getting details of people or cars will probably be better. However, when there's a lot of motion, I think having the higher frame rate would be better because that way you're getting more of that motion. The camera's keeping up with it. But yeah, there's other things that you can set how long the loops are. Uh, and the screen display, as I mentioned, yeah, you can do picture in picture. So if you want, you can set it up where you see both of them at the same time. It would be nice if I can get this thing outside. Uh, obviously, it's not waterproof. That's why I obviously couldn't do it besides the fact I don't have rear uh, windows. But if I did manage to get the outside of my vehicle through the back, I can put the rear camera uh, display up on the screen and use the, the camera itself like a rear view ca uh, mirror, basically. Uh, I don't know how the distance works though, but but anyway, yeah, you can do other things, turn the audio recording on and off, uh, you can set the date, you can do all that as expected. Uh, Anti-flicker settings, you can set that here, that's changing from PAL to NTSC. And uh, you can actually have it prompt you to format the card every 15, 30, or 60 days or not at all. Um, I'm not really 100% sure why exactly you need to do that, but it does have the feature to do that. And then you have the device auto off. Now, this as it says, device will automatically shut down when sitting idle, even when power still exists after set time. Now, that I'm sure uses the motion detector to see if there's any mo movement going on. And also, it might use the light sensor or maybe even picking up the fact that there's any motion on the camera. Like there's a motion sensor, actually like a gyroscopic type of sensor to text that kind of motion, not necessarily the motion of the video footage, if that makes sense too. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's how that mechanism works. I do know, speaking of motion control and all that, I've had some issues with this thing recording at night. And basically what's going on is when you turn this camera on and it's in a low light situation, the thing will actually chirp to let you know that, obviously. And what happens is it seems like after a certain length of time, it times out. I think it's like nine seconds. It sees that, you know, there's nothing going on, so it shuts off. There's not enough light, so it's no reason to record darkness. So I'm going to shut down and stop recording until there's another event. And I think it's when you hit like a speed bump or you do something where there's enough motion in the vehicle for the camera to go, wait, wait, I'm awake and start recording again. And then it realizes, hey, wait, it's dark uh, and shuts back off again. So I found that once I turned the motion sensor off, that eliminated that. It just kept recording no matter what. So that's kind of weird that it did that. It did not do that during the day. And you know, obviously during the day, the, the light sensor, the low light mode's not on. So that's what I figured the deal was. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. If that's something that could be fixed by the manufacturer, if you guys happen to be watching this, that would be huge because I think that's a big flaw. I mean, you would want the motion sensor detect, you know, on there anyway. But uh, again, you know, you have to tweak the settings to your individual needs. You know, your mileage may vary, as the expression always says. But yeah, there's uh, another menu besides the settings, and this is the feature settings. So you can actually have uh, drive time warning. So after every hour, the thing will beep to let you know, hey, take a break, which is kind of nice. You can actually turn that low light level warning on and off. Uh, here's that motion detection thing, as I mentioned. Parking mode, as I said before, once the car gets jostled and you can set the intensity, it goes off. Um, actually mentioning the rear cam, I thought maybe if I installed this in my vehicle, I would try to mount this up in the cab above my head facing back into the uh, back of the van. And there's a driver's side, passenger side, sliding door and a rear like uh, wing doors. And if anybody opens them, 
Uh, there's a good possibility that this thing will start to record and it should be wide enough of an angle where you could record everybody from either the back or the side doors. I have to try that out. Um, perhaps maybe I could do that. Um, I, I'm going to be turning this over to my friend in the morning when he comes over to install it, but maybe quickly we can just test that out. I do have actually video footage of me parked at a house I was working at and I was working in the back of the van and just from opening up the doors and the van shaking from that motion, this thing started recording. And I, I was able to look at the footage out of, obviously it was going out the front window. So that might be something to explore. Um, there really isn't anything else to point out in here except they do say at the top here, uh, when you plug this into a computer, it'll have a card V slash fo photo folder for pictures, obviously one for video and then one for emergency. And every time you press the emergency button, it actually put them into that folder, which is nice. And that's, uh, like I said, a protected folder. It's not part of that auto loop uh, repeat thing. Uh, they do mention somewhere here, yep, that the maximum card is 120 gigabyte, which is 720 minutes of recording time with both cameras, front and rear at 1080p. Uh, obviously for reference only, your mileage may vary. So with the 16 gig card, it comes with it's about 90 minutes. Uh, I can't say how long it is without the rear cam on the 1440p. However, I tried a 200 gigabyte card and this thing actually formatted as soon as you plugged it in and worked perfectly. And it's just mind blowing when you think this is 16 gigabytes. I have a four gigabyte somewhere. And I know people are gonna say, I remember a megabyte, you know, 120 megabyte cards like this. It's 200 gigabytes. It just, my mind blows, you know, you can just swallow one of these if you think about it and you know it's like micro film you know you could just swallow the micro film and just uh you know man that's bigger than my first hard drive in my computer blows my mind but anyway that should be enough hopefully to get from from here down to florida but yeah so we know that the 128 gigabyte is what they recommend as being the max but yeah it it, it definitely takes the large 200 gigabyte card now with a little fit, a two, um, 256 gig card I'm not sure they do exist. They make them bigger than that too. They may be 512, they may be larger. Uh, I can't say they'll work. Uh, just some more quick specs here if you want to gloss those over. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. Oh, it does audio in AAC format for those who, who are interested in that. Uh, I don't know what the video format is. I don't see that listed here. Uh, MP4, which is great. It does still pictures in 12 megapixel, which is great in JPEG format. You can see in the bottom. So yeah. Let's uh, get this powered up. I've been rambling on long enough. You're probably thinking to yourselves. So card goes in on top. I believe it goes in with the contacts facing backwards. Uh, perhaps this is actually a little fiddly to get this in. I'm glad I'm showing this off. And there's also these two pieces on top here. I'm not sure. Again, are those the microphones? Are these the mics? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's see if I power this up. Hopefully it can get in here and show us the edge and uh, turn off my light here give us a little bit of a better view as soon as it comes on it starts recording immediately which is great and you can see there's our little light blinking indicated is indeed recording uh, it does have date and time and this will stamp in the corner of the video i will show some uh, footage at the end of this what it does have uh, shows battery indicator when this is plugged in this goes away what mode we're in so we're in 1440p and it looks like 30 below that, if I can see this correctly, I am looking at it through the viewfinder. And three loop, that's obviously the three minute loop. And yeah, this is just going, tells you how much time is recorded. Now it will do three minutes and then it will uh, stop recording and then start another one. But because it's in the loop mode, uh, you'll actually get a few seconds, I believe, at the end of one video, that's the same at the beginning of another. So when you actually put this together, you have to uh, edit it out a little bit. And you can see from the camera, it's a pretty responsive camera. Um, not too bad and we can get a little shot of the lab over here but of course the viewing angle once you get to a certain angle gets kind of wonky but you, you're not going to be really looking at this terribly much I don't think in the vehicle uh, it does come off easily I should show that mount real quick this just keyholes in the top over here uh, like this basically and snaps in and then comes back off that's it I mean easy once you glue that onto the windshield it ain't coming out unless you use the pry bar so to get in here to any of the menus, if you press the button over here, it has this little caution. It won't let you in until you hit stop. So we can hit stop here. 
and then we can go into the menu so obviously you can change your resolution you can do all these different things here it does have an annoying beep so I can actually change that right here just by pressing OK and then a little stupid startup chime we're going to turn it off too now, after getting in and out of the vehicle a few times that's going to get old really quick it's nice to let you know it's coming on but yeah uh, WDR I believe is wide dynamic range this should change the light as you're going in between light and dark and kind of keep it even uh, and then the rest of it's kind of self-explanatory format and card I think most people know how to do uh, restore default settings I've tried that out of course it works always you know I got to play with this and then reset it so I can show you guys some scratch what you need to do in here uh, and then you press the menu button again and it takes you into the features so this is where you can do the motion detection uh, all this stuff low light and that's pretty much it. So I've already turned motion detection off on this. Uh, that was the first thing I did, and I just left the audio to show you guys what that sounds like. And then it goes right back into recording again. And if you want to take a still, you can press this. And that's it. There's your still. And you can actually go back and, and look at this. You can also play back from here once you're stopped. So if you uh, go through the modes here, you press this again. It takes you back through. And you have camera, here's your picture. And then you can hit OK over here, take you back to recording mode, which it does automatically start to record. And if you have to stop, you can hit stop. And then it'll stop recording, and then you can even hit play over here, and then obviously go back and show you the different things, normal files, emergency files, and so forth. And I'm not sure off the top of my head which one is the emergency button. It's probably this one right here, obviously, that would make sense. So, yeah, so let's put this into emergency mode up here. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, there's not really much to it. So, like I said, pressing that does that. Pressing this takes you into, uh, or it takes a picture. And I'll show you all these different uh, folders on the computer, what it actually looks like when it's done. And then you can press this, hold it in to power off the device. So installation of this. They recommend using a cigarette lighter jack in your vehicle that basically loses its power when you shut the car off. Uh, the particular vehicle this is going into is a 2013 Dodge Dart uh, Rally Edition. And Scotty says he has two jacks, one of them in the center console that's on all the time. And he tests it out, plug the thing in, the light stays on, the car is off. That's uh, an always on port as they call them obviously. And that one's nice because you can plug your cell phone into it and it's in a center console, it's hidden. You can leave your car charging your phone while you're away. The other one that's up in the dash underneath the air conditioning controls, uh, when you plug it in, the light comes on, when the key's on, when you shut the car off, it dies. And you want that for this particular camera because it detects power coming into it and that's how it determines when it should start recording or not. And I can actually simulate that right here on my desk using uh, some basic things. So I have this wire plugged into my power supply over here. And this is basically the power coming in from the car. We're gonna think of it that way. So when that power is applied to the camera, First of all, it starts charging. Second of all, it'll come on and immediately start recording. You saw the light was red here for a moment. Now it's flashing red. So you're going along, your vehicle's running. You obviously put it in the drive. You're driving around, you do your trip, everything else, great. You come back, you put it in park, you shut the car off. The minute power is removed, the camera starts to shut down just like this. And you can see it's running off of its internal battery, obviously, at this point. So that's really cool if that's not the particular case for your vehicle and you only have uh, one cigarette lighter jack that is always on no matter what uh, what you actually have to do is just take this guy and just like pull it forward a little bit to shut it off and then you have to remember oh i gotta turn my camera on you gotta plug it in that can get kind of annoying uh the other thing to do is well you get a hold of someone like me or take it to uh, uh mechanic or take it to somebody who knows what they're doing or do it yourself and find one of the lines maybe behind the car radio or anything like that that dies out with the car uh, ignition lines you know things like that and tap into that you know you'll need a little five volt 
regulator or something where you can uh, do that or put a little cigarette lighter on under the dash, tuck this thing into it. You know, you have to do a little bit of a custom installation. So in Scotty's car, we're probably just gonna use this so he'll still have a USB port up front in case he needs an extra and we'll run the wire down to it. The other thing, like I said, is actually I can reach behind that, pull the wire out of it and splice into it a five volt regulator or five volt power supply of some sort. And we can go that route. If we really want, we can even hack the, uh, one of the ends off of this, uh, the USB end, and just hardwire everything in and hide all the wires nice. You know, he intends on having that car for quite a while, so that may be something we'll do. That will be done tomorrow during the installation part of this. Um, so there really isn't anything else to point out here on the desk. What I'm gonna do is, is show some footage of what this thing looks like and also what it sounds like. Um, I have a variety of day sh stuff, some night stuff. Most of it's driving around locally. Uh, I do have some stuff where I drove around on a highway just to see what that sounds like and also what it looks like at night. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. Here we have an audio sample of the actual vehicle in motion. The, this is the microphone on the camera itself you're hearing right now. You may hear a lot of rattling around. This is a work style van with tools and all kinds of metal cans clanging around in the back. So that's important to note. You may also notice this is a very quiet road with not a lot of traffic. I will get into an area with some busier traffic and you'll hear what that sounds like. And right now at this point in our trip, we are actually on an on-ramp for an interstate. And I'm slowly gaining speed here. I have all the windows closed. You may notice some bumps going over this bridge. And of course, interstates are not going to be lit. We're relying on the lights of the other vehicles to see where we're going as well as our own lights. So we get an idea how this is going to look. Getting up to speed, I'm doing about 60, 65, close to 65 miles per hour, which is the speed limit on this road here. And when I obviously play this back, I'll see how the sound quality is as far as my speaking voice as compared to the outside noise of this vehicle. And you'll be obviously watching this live right now on playback to see how it sounds. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open the window now, and I'm not sure if this is going to drown my voice out, but if it does, I will obviously overdub what I'm trying to say on top of this. Now this is about halfway open, and I'm still doing about 65 miles an hour. So I know your mileage may vary on the sound quality of the microphone compared to your vehicle. How close your actual camera is to the window itself and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this window now. And hopefully you heard me pretty well. Well tomorrow is today and we have our vehicle here we're going to install the camera into. And this is actually going to go in this spot right underneath the rear view mirror. Scotty and I found that that was actually the best place to go. And you can see he has an easy pass device. So we're actually going to put that just below that easy pass. So that's going to be step one. Um, I'm actually going to take some denatured alcohol, put it onto a little paper towel, and just clean the windshield in that spot, and make sure that adhesive sticks really nicely. You could use anything like isopropyl alcohol, uh, anything like that, even just Windex it really honestly. But the cleaner the windshield, the better it is. So I'm going to go ahead and perform that step right now. Okay, now that the spot's clean, we're going to attach this by simply removing this little piece here and placing it into position like that and pushing it in. And that's about it. The only thing I have to test for is to make sure there's enough room for this to twist to be able to remove it. So I'll do that right now. And here's what we came up with. You can see it goes like this. We can twist it right off, take it off, and put it right back on. Of course, that's easier said than done when you try and do it on camera, but yeah, that's pretty easy. And then we're going to adjust back here how high or low the camera sits, and then all the wires here are going to get routed up the top. Now, to wire this unit up, you can see we have one wire coming out of each end of the top piece here. We're going to come along the easy pass unit here, and I'm going to bring these up to the top. 
This is where not only the mirror connects to, but there may be sensors up in this piece as well. We're gonna to try to run along this, and I'm gonna come along the top up here to where this headliner is. And we gotta be careful because this car does have airbags. So we're actually gonna run the wire along the outside here. This was actually the owner's suggestion. There, we're gonna use the little plastic clips that come with it and space them out along here and just clip both wires in nice and neat. And then when it comes to here, we're actually gonna come along this side tuck it in behind this panel it is pretty loose i can move it and i'm actually going to get the wire to come down into this area and i've already removed the panel you can see it uh, under the ground over here someplace and it's right over here and the wire will come along and go underneath and i'll pop out the car here and show you just where that's going to go i'll go under this area here through this area i just have this one kind of sitting stationary so you can still see it in place and i'm going to run up along and we'll do the same thing up in here along this headliner and then put the rear view camera facing up there and mounting the rear view camera is exactly the same as the front camera so i'll go ahead and do all that right now okay here's the finished job you see how i have everything hooked up into here like i said this comes on with the car so right now car is off this is off and the wire just there's enough just down here so if we need to remove this or do anything with it there's enough slack in it and it's also not in the way that way but it comes along here uh, we pull this actual cup area out here and there's some slack behind there as well which is nice but then when that was done that popped back in but the wire runs along here it comes this way one of them goes under this console and there is actually a little channel in here we ran that into and the other one comes up here so in this area here uh, you can see some zip ties on here just to hold this in place this is as good as we could get it without disturbing this panel any and it's not in the way so if this does actually come off when the airbags deploy you know there isn't any issue as far as i could tell the airbag is actually up in this area here so we are definitely far enough away from that uh, the wire curves up along this way and there is actually a big mounting tab up here i ran out of the ones that came with it so i just used one of my own and it works perfect it's nice and unobtrusive so again we'll follow the path along and all these panels popped out pretty easily and i'm going to pop out the car here show you the rest of it see how it goes along there to this other side as mentioned before up along into here and we actually undid the little screw in here so we can pop this out and then the wire runs along top and comes out the little rear view camera there and i'll show you what this looks like from outside the vehicle and you probably can't see it from the glare but it is in this spot right here this is actually the mountain tab so maybe shadow it or something but yeah you could trust me it is there what's nice is it's pretty stealth you don't really notice it and i guess that's the, the idea of it and the front one's pretty well hidden again you're getting a lot of reflection here so this car is hard to pick it up but you can see from where the easy pass module is it's sitting right below it and you don't really see any of the wires you can kind of see that mounting tab at the top not too bad and some stuff along the side now i can make a suggestion Again, manufacturers, if you're watching this, make these with black stickies in the back. You won't be able to see them then. You did that with your camera. You can hardly see that. But with these guys over here, you can see this. So if this was a black mounting tab on the back here, actually a black foam piece, you wouldn't see that at all. And that would be great. So with that, I'm going to pretty much end this here. Uh, I'll put some footage at the end of this, and we'll see what it looks like with the rear and front cameras.